It's if you're not from Nashville, it's a really cool venue. It's walking distance from here. It's a little bit of a walk, but uh, still walkable and a very very short Uber ride if if you're so inclined. Uh, so I hope to see you all there. It's going to be a great night, and it is free and open to the public. So if there's other people that are with you, they can come as well. People that might be like family that didn't uh, get a badge to the conference, but you can bring them as well. And it is 18 and up. So uh, if you have friends that are 20, they can get in on this one. Uh, another quick announcement. Uh, our sponsor, uh, MusicCitySongStar.com, they had sort of a little misprint in their flyer and wanted to make sure that it was clear that the contest that they have is available for everyone, not just people in Nashville. So be sure to stop by their booth, check it out. They're giving away a prize worth $5,000. And, uh, and uh, yeah, you want to you wanna make sure you, you connect with them before you leave. All right, I think that's, that's all the announcements. Uh, coming up is Tom Jackson and the live band makeover with, <laughs> yep, yep with Trent Harmon, and I've had the privilege of working with Tom uh, years ago with my band Small Town Poets, and it revolutionized our show. And we went from doing okay on merch and having an okay show to just knocking it out of the park every night. And so it's really important to pay attention and, and, and just understand the, the power of a good live performance. And with that said, Tom, why don't you come on up? How many of you here were here yesterday? How many of you weren't here yesterday? Wow, blows my mind. Um, well, gee, I don't know what to repeat because I expected some. How many are have not weren't here yesterday? Uh, significant. All right, so I'm Tom. Thank you very much. Let's go. Uh, my whole deal is I work with artists on their live show. There's so much going on here this week that you're writing and taking notes on and all that, and I don't understand any of it. Go to my website. My social networking sucks. Uh, all that kind of stuff. But here's the deal. If I do a good job here, you're going to tell somebody else about it. Am I right? Yeah. That's the only way I've ever built this thing. It's kind of old school but it has worked for uh, years. And, um, <laughs> and to me, that's, that's my way of building an audience. And I like that way for artists also. Now, in this industry, in this world, particularly in this town, it's all tried to be built by radio or other, and there's nothing wrong with any of the other ways to build an audience, except in most cases, all the way to, uh, the ways to get people as you're building an audience, eventually they want to come out and see you play live. Does that make sense? How many times have you heard a song, you love it, you go see it, or you, you like an artist, and then you go see them and you're disappointed? Happens a lot. In fact, multiple times people come up to me and told me, oh my gosh, I'm no longer a fan. It kind of spoiled the whole the whole thing, the experience that they did uh, at the show. So uh, my whole deal is the live show, simple as that. Um, what I'm gonna teach you today, and for those of you who are yesterday, I'm gonna repeat myself a little bit. There are concepts that I teach. There are concepts that apply no matter what kind of music you play. Uh, pop music, rock music, folk music, indie music, uh, hip hop, whatever. I've worked with virtually almost, I mean, there must be some you know, genre I haven't worked with, German polka. I'm working on that one. Um, but these concepts apply. It's like making a record. A good record is a good record. I don't care uh, what style of music. You need, you need really, really good songs. So a song and a hip hop thing and a song and a southern gospel thing, completely different, but for that genre, there's good. 
Same thing with the emotion you're trying to capture on, on, on a recording. The same thing with the tones that you bring on the record. On and on and on. There's concepts that apply across the board. It's the same thing up here. So today, even though it may not be your genre that we're working on, understand the concepts. Uh, I want to kick you in the butt in love. Listen, I want you to succeed. I, I want you to succeed. Really, the, the best thing that, that happens to me, well, maybe not the best, second best, um, is when somebody comes up and says, oh, my, I, and I've had it this week, when multiple people come up and say, oh my gosh, we read your book, we did this, we did this, we worked at it, and we're now full time. And, and they're high-fiving me. Who would like that? Yeah. Now let me say this, and I'm kind of leaning into it right at the beginning. Don't, because we've sold a ton of books, we're almost out. Don't buy the material, read it once and say, I've got it. There is no way you've got it. That's, it's, I mean, it, I'm, I'm flattered, but I'm insulted, if that makes any sense. I've spent 25 years working on this material. You read it once and go, done. No way. The idea is it's supposed to be a workbook. These DVDs are supposed to be, you're supposed to stop them and, and fight in the band or go, wait, what did he really mean here? Because, but I've got people in this room, and you can go, woo, that have done that, and their merchandise sales have skyrocketed. <laughs> their bookings have gone up. They're doing music full time. Yeah. So keep at this. Keep, I, listen, I've done this a long time, and to this day, I'm still learning. In the last month, I said this yesterday, um, going back to the idea of concepts. In the last month, maybe five weeks, I have worked with a singer-songwriter who goes out and does gigs all by herself. One girl on her guitar. We spent three days at my place down in Fort Myers. Then, what was next? Was it you guys? Then I went, flew to Kansas City, worked with a great indie band that's here, Dawson Hollow, you'll hear about them. Um, and we spent two 12-hour days uh, working on their show. Then I went and worked with an, an act that goes into arenas 60, 70 times a year. And then I worked with a duo getting them ready for a thing called NACA. Anyone knows what NACA is? Yeah, yeah. And I, I'm telling you the truth. I did exactly the same thing with every act. No different conceptually. And that's what we're going to do here today. And, and, it, and what it has become for me is a method. And, and when I say method, for those of you who weren't here yesterday, I'm not trying to put you in a box. When people hear about what I do, the first thing they go, oh, choreographer, or he's going to make me something I'm not. It's completely the opposite. But, but there are limits to what you can do. There's a stage. There's your instrument. Gerté says, working within limits, mastery reveals itself. Somebody like Stevie Wonder knew that. He could write a three and a half minute song that every musician in the world would go, dude. And then and every person who was totally musical ignorant could sing along to. He was a master. Sting, same thing. So I'm not trying to change who you are. What I'm trying to do is within these rules, with, within this limitation, be able to give you a way so that you can express yourself completely in a way that the audience gets it. People ask me all the time, what, what do you really do? I, I tell them, I'm a marriage counselor. Depending on which, one, which gender you are, and I don't want to get into that today. <laughs> Hus I'm the husband, your audience is the wife, or vice versa. I, here's, the, here's I, again, I get interviewed all the time. People say, what is the biggest mistake? Or what are the three biggest mistakes? Well, one of those mistakes is simply this. You, the artist is on stage. They're playing their music. Their adrenaline is pumping. They hear their voice. Inevitably, somebody is sitting out there going, yeah. And they're thinking, how couldn't it be good? It's me. 
You're laughing because you know what I'm talking about. Touches me, moves me. I want it to move you, and music is supposed to move you. But it's also, if you're going to include a partner, your audience, it needs to move them too. Otherwise, it's musical masturbation, which can be fun. But you're not going to make a lot of money. You're not going to make a living. You're not going to affect a lot of lives. So what we need to understand is how it changed, changed my life was I was playing in a band you know, years ago. And, and one of the instances that happened was we were, out, we were playing like a, a third and dairy, not even a secondary uh, town, you know, in the middle of nowhere. And we had sold out this place, 1,300 seats. And before the show, uh, we are playing a little football, and our drummer either broke his arm or just completely messed it up, and he couldn't play that night with two arms. Now here's, But we had no way to get anybody in. The show was sold out, so he had to play with one arm. He wasn't even a good drummer with two arms. So we're playing, I, I, this is the truth, I, I was the bass player, and I'm playing on stage, and I'm completely sweating bullets, thinking, because I'm thinking, what's happening up on stage in a band is like, play it tight, do this, do that, do, you know, we got to get this. So we're up there, and it's just all over the map, right, timing-wise. Not that that ever happens with drummers. Um, and I, we finished the first song, and I'm just sweating bullets, and I'm thinking, they are going to walk out instead standing ovation. And I went, whoa, what's this about? And I started realizing that the audience was looking at something different than I was. So what is it they're looking at? You need to understand your audience. And the first thing you need to understand about your audience is why do they go to an event? Hear music. Here's what they go for, three reasons. I'd say write these down, but don't. Just buy the book. They go to be captured and engaged. That's a fancy way of saying they want to be present. They don't want to be thinking about the next day at work or school or whatever. They want to be completely present. How many times you go to a movie and it's over and you go, oh my gosh, I can't believe it's over. You were completely present the whole time. You were captured and engaged through the whole thing. So your job is to learn how to capture and engage an audience. Now I say that, I've had this happen oh, dozens of times where a young band will come up and go, man, we do that, we jump around all night long. I'm like, yeah, whatever. What does that mean? We run fast, real fast all the time? Is that gonna capture and engage what? You. But we need to learn how to capture and engage an audience, and that has to do with the writing of the set list, what we do up here on the stage, the placement on stage, how to put pressure on an audience, take pressure off, where to go through some of that stuff. But we need, that's the first thing they want to do. They want to be present. They don't want to go there to look at their phone. Second thing, they want to experience moments. They don't go to hear songs, folks. They think they do but they want to experience emotional moments. They want to laugh, they want to cry, they want their heart to beat faster, they want to be a part of something. So the question is, are you creating moments? Not for you, for them. For them. And the third reason people go is to have their lives changed. Now, not one person in the world walks in, sits down, and goes, okay, capture and engage me. Create some moments that don't change my life. Nobody does it. But when it happens, listen to me. You have a fan forever. You want to make a living? Capture and engage an audience, create moments, and change their lives. Now, what do I mean by change their lives? Multiple things. Make them laugh on a, after a day that's really hard. Create, create an atmosphere that is just so extraordinarily 
whatever you are, that they go, oh my, they don't even know they're changed, but they're like, it's like uh, Springsteen, you too. Now I'm going old school, but let me tell you why. Because Bruce Springsteen and you two haven't had a hit on the radio in 20 or 30 years. And yet, guess what? They come to town, what do they do? They sell out an arena. When you develop a fan base from your live show, when you start going up, and, and inevitably, guys, you start coming down. If you develop from your live show, you come down way slower than, I have a hit song. Where are they now? <laughs> Who was it? And I don't know. I'm not going to say the artist because I, I, I'd probably say the wrong one and get sued. But, but, but somebody, I, I just saw it about four months ago, an artist that is pl plastered everywhere on TV and, you know, this, I had to cancel her tour because there was only 60 tickets sold. 300 here, 600 here, 60 here. And you would think that's impossible because you see her everywhere. Her, you know who the genius in that whole thing is? Is her PR people. They got her everywhere. The problem is she can't deliver. And, and the hit song that she had a year and a half earlier was old news now in this day and age. Things move pretty quick, don't they? I'm not going to say that. So... So you need to understand your audience. Also understand about your audience that your audience is ignorant. Say that? Yes, I can. They're not stupid, though I'm sure some of them are. <laughs> but they're ignorant. They don't understand musical things. They're not sitting back going, wow, on that second chorus, that harmony, the fifth and the third, that's awesome. Ooh, is he doing a triple stroke roll back there on the drums? I like the counter, counter rhythm. Is he using a Les Paul? Or is that a Strat? What kind of strings does he use? Is that a Marshall stack? No, they're going, he's cute. <laughs> I like that. <laughs> Man, look at those pants. Check out Carrie's legs. Now, I'm being a little facetious, but they're not sitting there evaluating your music. This is an American Idol, though this will be tonight a bit, but uh, I didn't think of that, where people are paying attention to the voice. They're just, they're going for those three reasons. The question is, are you going to deliver those? But they're ignorant when it comes to musical things, but they're geniuses when it comes to human behavior. Why? Because... They're human. They don't experience Mixolydian scales. Unfortunately, today, most musicians don't either. <laughs> A whole nother conference. <laughs> um, but they do experience nervousness. I said this yesterday. How many of you have ever gone to a concert? The person up here, I don't care if it's a concert. I don't care if it's a coffee shop. I don't care where it is. And the person on stage is so nervous, you start praying for them. God, please help that person get it together. <laughs> Have they stopped yet? I got to go to the bathroom. I can't take this anymore. Anybody there? Yeah. Audience is the same thing. They see when someone's nervous because they get nervous. So you need to understand, that's what they pay attention to. Who you are is more important than what you do. So we need to understand our audience. Second thing, we need to love our audience. Now, I don't mean love. Everyone loves their audience when they're um, clapping for them. But it's the attitude of wanting to give anything you can for the benefit of each individual in the audience. You are there for them, not you. Quite a change. And, if you, and, and you know what the enemy of 
loving your audience is? Do you guys remember the story, whether you believe it or not? Um, Adam and Eve, everyone knows the story of Adam and Eve. Do you realize Adam and Eve were in the garden, naked, perfectly loving each other, perfectly loving God, and if you could see it in the spirit, the energy would be going out from each person. They weren't, but as soon as they took of the fruit, they became the enemy of love, which was self-consciousness. Oh, I'm naked. Now, hopefully you're not standing on stage going, oh, I'm naked. <laughs> Though today, who knows? <laughs> but your, your focus is inward. So you're, maybe you're not saying I'm naked, but you're going, okay, how do I sound? How do I look? How do I smell? Oh, the guitar player. Oh, that person in the third row. We're preoccupied with? Yeah. And we're waiting for them to respond to get the night going. Completely backwards. We're the one that's supposed to start this party. So you need to do everything you can so when you hit this stage, that energy is going that way. That's, that's a whole nother class on mental, emotional, psychological, spiritual preparation before you walk out on the stage so that when you hit that stage, it's like a football player. Those guys have those headphones on and by the time they hit that field, they, they don't wait till the second quarter. If they do, they're off the team pretty quickly. First play, bam. Coach has the plays already, first 15 plays already worked out. There's a plan to start this party and get, get the advantage, bring people into the what's going on tonight versus I hope you like me. Hope. Or I'll just play my songs, play them tight, and that should do it. Yeah. They hear my words and I feel it. I've heard this so much at these conferences, not this one, God forbid, never. But if you just feel it, then they'll feel it. No! Gosh, if that would work, my marriage would be so smooth. <laughs> she in here. <laughs> did we record that? We did. I love her to death. But that, that's part of the problem. She doesn't always know it. I may feel it. So we need to understand our audience. We need to love our audience. And that's the attitude of wanting to give anything you can for the benefit of each individual in the audience. Now here's my whole method. And this is what I want you to study. In bite-sized chunks, it starts with the way I use it is, is uh, my analogy is building a house. When you build a house, the first thing you need is, is what? Plan. Yes, good. A plan. You need a vision for your show. There's a, there's a saying, without, without vision, the people perish. And I have paraphrased it into, without vision, your show's going to be me mediocre or average at best. Because you go out on stage and you wing it because you want to be spontaneous and understand I'm totally I'm totally for spontaneity but spontaneity and winging it are two different things most of you are winging it thinking it's spontaneity you know we go out on stage and we try we try something whether it's musical visual verbal whatever we're making it up as we go because we're spontaneous here's the amazing thing if it works you get a reaction from the crowd, the next night you play, are you gonna do that thing? More than likely, aren't you? Yeah, where'd the spontaneity go then? No, the idea is to, bu to build a show with, with a, the psychology. It's like, I use it, the psychology of uh, a restaurant or a, um, yeah, or I guess a restaurant. There's, there's certain things that come out at a certain time and your audience has certain expectations. And if you meet those expectations, dare I say exceed those expectations, you have the potential to have a career. 
And last time I checked, and I, listen, I know people make money on Spotify. I know people make money on YouTube. I don't understand any of that. If I did, I probably would. But I hire people, a lot of people, to do that stuff, and all it does is cost me money. So I just do what I can do, which is stand up here on this thing or go work with artists and hopefully make a living doing what I do. And that's what I'm saying to you. I, but last time, in fact, uh, some friends of mine who wrote the Indie Bible, they sent me a thing just about three weeks ago saying this, this should help. 88% of the money that is made by artists is made by their live show. I don't know about you. You know, but I know this, when you get to a show, the people pay you, you sell merch, that, that's one of the ways you make money. Now I will add a couple things, and it's in the book about if, if anyone in this room has any, any playing 50 shows or more, come see me or my wife after the show, and you, you care about kids, uh, I can help you also financially that way. Tour support. Or it doesn't have to be a tour. You, just, you can be a weekend warrior. But there's multiple streams of revenue that happen at a live show, and you need to set those up and capitalize on them so that you can make a living. But the key here is creating moments in your show because people will run to your table to, to buy that moment. If you make them feel a certain way, they will go back to the table and say these words. Where's that song? Now, here's what they're saying. Where, where's the song called da 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 But really, what they're saying is, where's that song that made me feel that way? Because I like the way that feels, and I want to feel that way again. But if you don't create those moments... Now, so, now, here's the deal. Everyone in this room has created those moments randomly. Randomly. The night... The planets have aligned. The spirit has fallen. You can actually hear the monitors. <laughs> it's magical. <laughs> and, and it's a love fest in the room, and you're like, this is why I'm doing this. Do I hear an amen to that? Yeah. Here's the problem. You don't know why it happened. No, I'm serious. You don't know why it happened. It was a random event. That's what, that's what amateurs do. They're talented as, as any professional, but they haven't put in the work and the no, don't have the knowledge to create that every night. That even on a bad night, you win. And it can be done. In, this sounds arrogant, but it's real in all humility. I know why, and I know how to make it work. And you need to pick my brain, not a coffee. Plus it, well. But you need to do this every single night. So on a bad night, how many people from Chicago here? All right. When Michael Jordan was a bull. You guys know who Michael Jordan is? Please say yes. Yeah. Oh, laugh. You'd be amazed when I start talking about an artist and, and at the, some of these days, and I'm like, so you've never, you've never heard of the Beatles? Weren't they, you're, you're, you really, I want to carry a wiffle ball bat. Wham! Uh, anyway. So when Michael Jordan was a bull, my ADD is just starting to kick in, guys, so just let's float this way and that way. Uh, it'll be fun. Um, when Michael Jordan was a bull, even on a bad night, they won. Now, they only won by one or two or three, but on those magical nights, they win by 30 or 40. And, and, and that's what makes a magical show too is that consistency night after night after night and you know what you're trying to accomplish when you walk out on the stage you're not out there here's the here's the mo for most people we're out here playing music and hoping something good happens that's like getting in your car 
driving around hoping to meet your future wife or husband, unless you're married. Then it's your girlfriend or boyfriend. <laughs> no, if you, if you really want to hook up, you go to a place where people are at. It's intentional. It's the same thing with your show. If you really want them to buy that CD, if you really have something that you, that as you wrote these songs, there's four reasons we do this thing. I, uh, listen, by the grace of God, I mean that I might speak to more artists than anyone that I know of all around the world. And, and after a while, even a rock could start figuring stuff out if you keep hearing stuff. So I'm just a little sharper than a rock. And here's... And here's the four things that I've picked up that artists like you do this. The first, music. Who loves music in this room? I mean, it, it's, it is, could you imagine no music? A mind numbing. We do it because we love music. And we love music more than the normal person, which makes you not. And you already know that, don't you? I've been out there, I've been talking to you. <laughs> Second, the message. What you write as, as a, you feel like you might have something to share with people or connect with them in a way that, the, that there's that emotional connection where people go, I get it, or I believe that, or I want that. That's why we write those words. Hopefully that someone goes, I'm with you. We're not isolated anymore. Third, money. We want to make money doing this thing. Who in this room would like to make a living doing it? All right. So money, all I know, all I know, again, I don't understand all that other stuff, but I know this, if you walk out on the stage, rock somebody's world, capture and engage, create some moments and change their lives, they will come back to see you, and they will tell somebody else and drag them with you. And I, I realize it's the slow way to do it, but I'll tell you, as I said earlier, it's the long-lasting way to do it, too. Now, I'm not opposed to winning a contest or getting a hit song, but I, what I am opposed to is when now that we've got this audience, they come to see you, it's just okay. It's like somebody advertising this amazing, Restaurant, you know, those things that shoot up to the sky, you know, oh, oh grand opening, right? And you go in and the, mu and, the and the food is just average. You're not going to go, hey, everybody, let's go to this average restaurant. Some will say, hey, did you hear about, yeah, I went to it last night, the food was okay. That's a really great endorsement. Yeah, you're okay. How were they? They were okay. Makes me really want to go out and buy their record and drive 12, you know, get up when I'm tired after work and go out and see their show. Okay. And the last reason we do this is me. Music, message, money, and me. And what I mean by me is this. Fulfillment. I will tell you this. I'm one of the most blessed people on the planet because I've found what I'm supposed to do. And I get to do it and I get to make a living doing it and I have people come up to me and say, oh my gosh, what you said actually works. You, you guys have all experienced this in some way, shape, or form, hopefully, where someone comes up, that song changed my life. That's what it's about. But we need to make the money. So, what we're gonna do here today is what I sort of did yesterday for those of you who are in the room, but I want you to understand the concepts that we're doing. You noticed that when I did the singer-songwriter thing with both artists, completely different artists, there were some, some similar things that I did. So let's just see what happens today. I'm gonna, um, oh, let's, do, let's bring the band up. Um, and we, listen guys, this takes a lot of mm, to step up in front of your peers and, and be told what to do in front of 800 people or whatever. So we like them. We're a kind audience, aren't we? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and
And you need to be grateful that it's not you up on the stage. <laughs> um, yes, so in your seats, while they're getting set up here, in your seats, you guys, I do a, a blog, and this, this is my associate stand-up, Amy, Amy Walter. She work, she's worked with me for 10 years. She works with artists on their show just like I do. Amy and I do blogs every Tuesday, free blogs. Sign up for our email list. We don't try to sell you a bunch of stuff. I try to sell you a bunch of stuff while I'm at the event, okay? But no, we're here to equip you guys. That's it. If this stuff works, if it's the truth, if it really works, I, I'm not worried about my job. I'm doing fine, by the way. Um, so fill out the email cards, leave them on your seat, and, and we're good. You'll get an email from us every Tuesday, and you can unsubscribe anytime you want. I won't bug the heck out of you, okay? Um, and then when we're doing a conference, and I, I think I'm leaning, I'm saying this with my own lips, and I don't want to, but I, we'll be doing our own workshops again. We, we stopped for a couple of years. But I realized yesterday doing the singer-songwriter thing that it wasn't enough time. So I know we need to dig in deeper. So if you're on my email list, I'll tell you when we're doing those events. Um, what else? You guys got some music uh, set up? You guys can hit some notes. It's all right. Let me hear, let me, let me, let me hear the bass. It's all about the bass. the deal in a perfect world this is what you guys are doing this is your band you're the lead singer and you're watching yourself perform and you're saying okay I want to make my show better how do I make it better because how many have you ever watched video of yourselves scary isn't it I hate it too I hate it I hate it but when I, whenever I've seen people, and there are people out there that say, oh, we do what Tom does. And, I, and I, after about six or seven or eight of these watching them rehearse, I'm sorry, it sounds ar arrogant, but they don't. They major in the minors. Hold the microphone like this. Smile. I'm like, ah! I mean, I want you to hold the microphone the right way. I want you to smile. But audience is going to go, oh my gosh, they're holding the mic right. This is awesome. No. So, anyways, you are, you are the band, you're watching yourself. If you're a bass player, drummer, lead singer, etc. How would you improve your show? So let's give it up for Trent Harmon and the band. Hey, y'all.
Let us have it. Let us have it, yeah. No, you guys have been good. Dude, you won American Idol last year? Congrats. Give it up for them. <laughs> yeah, I like to see old country boys win stuff. Because <laughs> it is stuff. All right. Um, good song, too. Radio song, cool. Let's start it again, and somewhere in this mess, I'm going to stop it. Right. And th all this is, is rehearsal. This, if you want to know, people say, oh, we want to work with you. We want to work with you. What does it look like? This is what it looks like, except it's not in front of 800 people. facetious we talked about this yesterday what people pay attention to in a concert singer songwriter songwriters we think it's all about the words and you know the song in this town it's all about the song this is a crock of crap but we want good songs and we want there's i'm saying I'm, I'm all about it by the grace of god i've worked on over 100 number one songs i'm not putting songs down but it's not all about the song, because if it was, we'd all be stars. But it's about multiple things. And one of those things, obviously, is a voice, which is huge. So um, what is the chorus? You, What is the chorus? Go, play it for me. You, just play it, just you alone. Every song on the radio, every breath of wind with the windows down, every All right. stone. All right, so those of you in my class yesterday, I'm, 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 I'm going to drive this home. I did the exact same thing with um, both artists yesterday. Strum that, take that out of time. Get up there. Every song on the radio, every breath of wind with the windows down. Every stone on a gravel road, every stretch of mile in this whole town. 
Every whoa, star. Whoa, 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 stop. Did someone, dude, so your, your voice has got it. Anybody get a chill? You just sold a ton of records. Did anybody get a chill when he was playing it with the whole band originally? Well, uh, no. This is, no, this is not that. Hey, it happens to you too, so no. <laughs> it's what I'm talking about. Does that make sense? Boy, you, dude, you have a great voice. I, you have a great voice, so let, let's, let's milk it. All right, so do it again. Um, and not only that, I couldn't hear your lyrics. Could you guys? No, it's not because of the sound or anything. It's because it's live. I don't have headphones on. We don't pass. We're not doing a silent rave right here. <laughs> Ever done those? Awesome, dude. <laughs> what are you listening to? I, I don't know. Oh, sorry. There's the ADD going full. It's starting to rage. Okay, so. Good sounding guitar, too. Am I right, guitar players? Yeah. Oh, wait. Guitar players, because it's not really getting personal. But don't tones, bass men, keyboard players, provoke a feeling? Yeah, that guitar, when you strum it, you go, oh yeah, oh yeah. That has an emotion all in itself. But if we bury it, it, it gets lost. We're, we're trying to watch something, and we not, here's the deal. We don't know what to pay attention to. And you're, neither does your audience. So it's like it's all coming at a million miles an hour, and we're trying to figure out what it is. What it is. So um, hit it again. And I want you to take the whole chorus and do it all by yourself. And I want you to take it out of time. Five, do the, now don't, don't over sing. Just sing. Kill me. Every song on the radio, every breath of wind with the windows down. Every stone on a gravel road, every stretch of mile in this whole town. Give me Diamond. Not, so for those of you who don't know what Diamond is, it's a Nashville thing. Women, it's not this thing on your finger. They're like, please give me Diamonds too. No. Every song on the radio, every breath of wind with the windows down. Every stone on a gravel road, every stretch of mile in this whole town. Pause. Whoa, whoa, whoa. You're in a hurry. You married... No. no. <laughs> I didn't understand you. <laughs> no. Slow down. <laughs> I'm a marriage counselor, I told you. <laughs> but I don't love it. Milk this thing. Take it out of time. No one, no one is sitting there with a metronome in their head except you and him. And... Uh, <laughs> And he can't get it right anyway, so it doesn't really matter. <laughs> I'm messing with him. <laughs> All right, take this out of time. And, and it is. That's it. That's it, dude. Diamond that. Tell me this. Tell me it. Every song on the radio, every breath of wind went the windows down. Every stone on a gravel road. Every stretch of mile in this whole town. Every star up in the sky, baby, see the way they shine. Cause something about you and tonight, it all feels like mine. Great. I, I'm, I'm not firing the band, though. I like them too much. Then. <laughs> then, then I, then I want. Let's get into the song then. Okay, one more time. Get this going. But let, for those of you who are in my class, sister, the rest of you who weren't, whatever. Uh, we did this. We did the same sort of idea. We take the chorus and milked it on, on stage. Here's another thing. Uh, Oh, am I going to go down this bunny trail? Can either of you other guys sang? All right. 
All right, I, want, I, didn't, I didn't even notice. The, the, do you sing at all? Do you? Yeah, yeah. All right, all right, all right. All right. Can, you, can you add a harmony to that somewhere? Let's, let's try it. Now, I might mess it because that was, that was about as good as it's going to get, but I just want to, this is what rehearsal is. I, I would go, let's just try harmony. And if it works, everybody in the room will know, oh, that worked. And if it doesn't work, guess what? We don't do it. It's real, it's real hard to figure out. Now, let him have a couple lines, and then you add some sweetener. And I have no idea where. All right. But we're all watching you. <laughs> all right. You have a sound on the radio. Heavy breath the wind with the windows down. Heavy hey, stone. Hey, what happened to the diamond? <laughs> no, this is good. This is, this is exactly what rehearsal is. Normally when I work with an artist on a song, if we were gonna nail it, getting ready for tour, eight hours, one song. People go, well, how, why? Did he get it that time? No, we, well, first of all, for some of you older artists, we have to break some bad habits. You ever tried breaking a bad habit? Real easy, isn't it? Yeah. Um, so the point is repetition is how we learn. So give me those diamonds, kill me. And don't worry about him. He's gonna jump in somewhere. And if he does it right, it'll win. If it doesn't, we'll keep it as it is because it won that way. Right. And you guys, bass, guitar, get your butts out of there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't wanna be watching you, watching him sing this song except from the back. All right, go for it. All right, here's what I would do. Strum that chord and walk up. You have a sound on the radio. Every breath of wind with the windows down. Every stone on a gravel road. Every stretch of mile in this hotel. Every star up in the sky. Baby, see the way they shine. Cause something about you and tonight It all feels like mine come to the front and put pressure on the audience all right we, really what we're doing is going how you doing rather than <laughs> not that you're doing that dude no you're not no but it's like yeah we're gonna rock this tonight how you doing looking good yeah I'm gonna go back and play <laughs> we're starting the party all right so one more time, four on the floor, put pressure on the audience, and then let's get into the verse. Yeah, yeah, because now this is the deal. I'm, I'm confessing here. When, when there's something that moves me in rehearsal, sometimes I'll go, do it again. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Because it's just so sweet. Dude, kill that, kill that. Pick your spots a little better. Give me just the last couple lines of a, of, a, of a something. Or maybe, I don't know, mess with it. We would mess with this all, oh, to, to make it perfect, the harmony. But we don't have that time. But try it again. So, you, so that chord is leading you out to the thing. Brown. You have a song on the radio. Every breath of wind with the windows down. Every stone on a country road, every stretch of mile in this whole town. Every star up in the sky, baby, see the way they shine. Cause something about you and tonight, 
It all feels like mine. Put your hands together. This is for you and for him. So she's got you coming out here to put pressure on the audience, but what happens? All of a sudden we're out here and all of a sudden we gotta go, oh, I gotta sing. And then all of a sudden we're like rocking, we're rock stars, we're rocking this thing, and gotta get back. <laughs> so what we want to do is land on, land on the one. Just land on the chords. And guys, when you when you go to leave, don't back up because it's yeah. it's squirrely. If you come back here, you're a rock star, and then all of a sudden you're like, excuse me, you know, you're backing <laughs> away. It looks apologetic, so just turn your back. When you turn your back to the, on the audience, they automatically look somewhere else. So, you know, a lot of times you, you'll have a lead guitar solo or something you want them to look at. When that guy comes up, you, when the singer is leaving and the guitar player is coming up, we automatically look at who's who's coming towards us and who's you know leaving. So we the audience yeah, it's we're, misdirection. Here's what's going on. You, we're watching you. We're watching everybody. These guys. What is it called? Misdirection. No, oh. we're gonna bail out. Oh, bail. We, a bail out. Yeah. We pro and, and here's the deal. This is what I'm talking about in terms of working. You guys, right now, I'm, we're gonna see a bailout. He's gonna go, blah, blah, and he's gonna turn around. And you're gonna go, I got it. And here's the deal. You don't got it, is that? It's good English in the South. Uh, <laughs> you don't have it, you have to, it's, it's wood shedding it. You gotta get comfortable to where you can bail this way, and you can bail this way, and you get comfortable doing it, not just in your head. So, but bail, you stay up there and lay on that one. Boom, 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 boom. And I want you to do your best Bono imitation. Well, you can't do that, but you get. Uh. Stay up there, and then you decide when it's time to go back and sing. Does that make sense? And then when you start singing, they pick up the chord progression. You with me? All right, good. Try that. See, here's the difference. Most of you, and this happens a lot in country music and pop music, the song is in control, not the artist. And you can feel it. Oh, I gotta get back. Oh, I gotta do this. Oh, I gotta do this. Because why? Because that's the way we recorded it. Whatever. They recorded, and, and think about it. Oh yeah, the, the audience is sitting out there going, oh, they gotta get back to get to the verse on that song that I've never heard in my life. And if they don't do it, and if they don't do it, it's going to be a mistake. Now, in your case, they've heard it or will hear it. But anyway, go. Try it again from uh, four on the floor. Oh, whoa, whoa. Sorry, sorry. Verbally say to your audience, put your hands together with me. Bound, all right? Lead them. Put your hands together, let's go. you to stand out here and just take it like a man. <laughs> you, you stay up here and land on the, what is it, is it an E? What is it? Yeah. Da -da -da -da. These guys bail, you're like, and then you go back to sing whenever you want. On a night, this is where the spontaneity comes in, folks. On a night when the audience a love fest, he could stand up here for six minutes. And Bono does. He's like.
Am I right? And no one is going, wow, that's weird. <laughs> They're going, Bono. <laughs> He's in charge. He has the authority. I'm going to talk about authority in a little while. Um, so you, go, you come out, you rock it with them, and then when we hit the, the, two, the, the intro's gone, you stay on the one and stand up there like, yeah, we're going to kick this tonight. Da -da -da. I'm going to go back and sing when I want. Does that make sense? I did now. All right, try it again. because by the time you get over to him, it's time to go back. So, so actually make a connection. Um, all right, relationships. Here's the subplot. Here's the subplot. We're watching music, we're thinking. Yeah. But let me tell you what people are paying attention to is the people. And if they see something going on on stage, I, I said this yesterday, I didn't get hammered for this every time. I have a t-shirt that says, guys like guitar riffs, Girls like relationships. And all of the girl musicians go, oh, no way. I like guitar riffs. Yeah, whatever. So uh, <laughs> my point yeah. is this. Yeah. People pay attention to relationships on stage. It's a, just a natural thing. So what we have to do is develop relationships on stage. There are artists, though, I won't say, that if you, I follow their social networking. I, I did this intentionally, I will say. Taylor and, and uh, one of her guitar players on one of the tours. And if you follow the social networking, it'd be like, girl, are they, are they here's what's going on social net, not all of it, you know, besides I hate her, I hate her, I love her, I love her, I love her. There's, are they going out? Are they a thing? Are they, and you're thinking, what does this have to do with the music? Absolutely nothing! But that's what the audience pays attention to, some of them. So if you don't have those relationships, you're missing a percentage of your audience. You want a wider audience, include both men and female. Men and female, male and female, whatever it is. <laughs> and if you want, figure out the ones in the middle, okay? <laughs> I can help you with that one too. All right, so from the chorus, do the turnaround. You guys come together, jam together, and go back and sing and start the second verse.
let's Springsteen, come on. Let's go on. Let's hit that one again, just for a bit. Yeah. No. 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 At the at on top of verse two, and put that guitar behind your back. Take your right hand. Grab the neck. All the way down. Now, do you have a strap lock? Okay. You better leave one hand on. Yeah. Get a strap lock. Get that one. way your hands can be free. So yeah. So that now you can just emote a little bit now with your with your body with your arms and stuff. So if you're gonna have that All guitar right. down for verse two, that's awesome. I love it. Because they're gonna cover it. it add so some dynamic change too. So and you're already doing that. So cool. Yeah. Yes. Dude. So start with start from the same place. Yeah. Top and, of the and course. The turn around. Take from the course. Yeah. Into the turn uh, turn around and then back to the verse. Pull your guitar down. You guys. Back up a little bit. We want to pay. If, if we're always looking, if you're always out here, yeah, you're, it's a little bit of misdirection. We're, we're kind of like, are they going to do something? But if you're back, we know the focus is on him. Yeah. Um, and during the turnaround, hang with him longer. No, we, don't be in a hurry to get over to him. But play off each other. Yeah, boom. And you don't have to do the, the get them to do this together. So yeah, face each other. Face each other. Yeah. Yes, that instead of. Yeah, forget the audience yeah, for a bit. For, yeah, yeah, yeah. You're just jamming. You're making it up on but the spot. Nice wink, yeah, wink. All right. Yeah, like good chord progression, dude. Yeah, I love what you're playing. Yeah. Bam. Yeah. All right. So you guys lay on that one until Trent decides he wants to sing. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Just for kick's sake. And no, no, no. Wait. Wait, wait, wait. Who wants to stop playing here? Let's see. What are you playing in the second verse? What are you playing, Tyler? Yeah, maybe leave right, that out. You drop out. Let's yeah, just have the three of you guys pull the thing back and then find a way in somewhere through the verse. You know what I mean? Halfway through or something. All right, go. If it's on the radio, way too. You are a meal. <laughs> I gotta repent here just a second. Hold on. No, but here's the deal. You are a meal. You're a meal. What I mean is your main course for you, dude, really to me is your voice. You have an amazing voice. Um, your songs are your complimentary thing in your meal. 
um, or they're, they're, they're squished together. But after, but after a while, I don't care how good that meat is. I need to go to something else. My salad. <laughs> what do you want it to be? Bread, salad, I don't care. Baked potato. <laughs> So that when we come back to the main course, it means nope. something. If it's always, we, what we do is we Chinese water torture our audience's death with the same thing we do. You know, and after a while, I, I want to stop and go in the eyes, oh, we'll talk, we'll talk, just do something different, okay? And also lets you connect with them. So take it from the end of the solo, two passes of the solo now, land on the one, let you need it, to sing right away. Let it ring. Yeah. Come on. It is a great groove. What's the hurry? Yeah. yeah. You'll find that out when you're married. Okay, so. <laughs> rock that, rock that twice through. Land on that one. And just let, let it live a bit, guys. Make the solo possible. Second half. Let's, let's, I like the solo. You guys like the solo? Yeah. From the top of the solo. Four pass. <laughs> oh, turn, turn up the guitar, up. guys. There'll be mutiny back there. Is that there. a woman? Yes, she likes guitar licks. So, All right, so let's try it again. No, let's do two passes because I got some other things to throw in this mess. Yeah, you, we're, so we're gonna do it. We're halfway through the solo, and then land up. Yeah. Let then lay on the groove. All right, guys, and. I don't mean stop, but just let that groove, let people like, just think, just, I'm gonna put the spirit of fish on you for a second. And actually, if you want to, it'd be great. Are you wireless? Awesome. All right. uh, the stage is a little bit cluttered, but if you wanna run over there and do the solo over there, awesome, because those guys wanna see you yeah. too. How about this? When you finish your vocal line, you do a bailout, yeah, and then you, this is practice. Spin. Run over there, you run over there, slide on your knees, start putting, okay. Uh, <laughs> you go jam with no. him, you go out there, no, do your solos so from here, there. and I know you can't hear yourself, uh, so we don't care if you make mistakes at this moment. That's, that's the stuff, that's the stuff we work out in our show with our sound man. Okay, you're, he's doing the solo from over here, then we need to get it in the, the monitors, or we have in ears, obviously, or something. So does that make sense? Two times through, you're doing it from over. You're playing over where Amy is on the on the solo, all right? And you're, you're already over here. You're already over here. Come on. Real quick, I was having Trent. I changed his angle here because he needs to connect with this side of the room. He needs to connect over here. So plus, it gives you a different view if you just see this all night. It gets old and you, you just start to get numb to it. Minutes. So it's just a simple change of the angle. Sing to these guys over here. They're going to connect and love you forever. How many angles are there on stage? Ooh, you guys yeah. are good. If you're singing with the band interacting. And you can see you sing them this here. way, 45 straight, 45 this way, and over here. Yeah. So don't and be afraid we, to sing on the side. When we do this angle, it's not a beauty pageant. You're not like... You go, then you go, and then you straighten up. Right. Or you're not a model. All right, go. Uh, no, let's go from halfway through, just because I got some other crap to throw at you.
stand there. Uh, you're going to turn facing him. Yeah, face him. Face him. Oh, don't be in a hurry. You're married? <laughs> That's the whole point of this. We want to we throw a lick, throw a lick, throw a lick, throw a lick, and as we throw these licks, we come closer together. Ooh, happy endings, okay? <laughs> all right, all right. You'll sell a ton of merch, trust me. Uh, all right, so let's take it from, I have no idea where we're at. Uh, bridge. Yeah, from the bridge. And you just take that off and, and just, just pay attention. Hey, pay attention. Pay attention. To us. I, we're making this up as we go. I mean, we work this out more in rehearsal, but we're running short on time. So let's take it from the bridge with you having the guitar on. Right, you have the guitar for the bridge. And then, boom, we land on that one, right? Let it ring. Oh, that's after the solo. Wait, no, solo. Yeah, we're, but we're going, we're, 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 you, you guys did it. We're not going through the progression. We're going back and forth on the, one, two. Uh, after the bridge. Boom, he's gonna, he's gonna do his. You just keep doing this. Boom. Don't change keys. <laughs> uh. All right. Um, top of the bridge. Go. So do that. Okay. Let's do the stop bridge the with the guitar. Okay. And then I want you to do, we can't stop now. I don't know what the words are. Na, 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 Done. Da, na, da. Da, 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 You're going to go, we can't stop now. We're cutting this in half. You're doing, you're doing a half. Just watch me. You stop singing when I go like this. You play when I go like that. <laughs> yeah. I've actually been in a, an orchestra pit yeah. at a show doing this. Yeah. Uh, Happened once. Cool. Yeah. And then I tripped yeah. over the oboe. No. What is an oboe? I don't know. <laughs> You're going to play the chorus, I mean the bridge, the bridge. Uh, completely the way you normal do, okay. and then we're going to lay on, we're going to go back and forth on the one and the four, and you're going to pull, pull, pull. Yeah, yeah, no down chorus at all. Yeah. Um, we're we're going to lay on the one a little bit, uh, not lay on the one, we're going to go one, four, one, four, and you're going to grab the mic that is wireless. Put it up here, Amy. What? G give him the wireless mic. Grab that one and stand well, out here. That clip's not, we need to switch the clip out. Can you grab a clip from that mic stand right there? Mr. Rick. You understand, you're, f you're, f you're, you're, you don't have to mimic him perfectly, yeah. but in terms of uh, phrasing, blah, 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 blah. Um, and we're, we're going to cut these in half. 
in half, and we're going to play something together. We'll have a happy ending. And here's the deal. When you, you sing or when you play your lick, the technique is this. You sing it or you play it, and then while the other person's doing it, you take a step or two in. Here's what, and this is, I can't believe I'm going to say this on film. I can help Springsteen on this. Him and Stevie come together right at the very beginning. And that's where it begins and that's where it ends. Though musically, it doesn't check, check, check. go somewhere. The idea is to build that tension because communication is 55% what the audience sees with their eyes. Check, check, check. There's now, if we do this correctly, they will see the music, not just hear the music. Can I get some of the wireless right here on stage? Just a little bit. Check. OK. <laughs> Oh, dude, you can sing in your sleep. You're so good. So, so stop it. <laughs> uh, you, you direct it. Oh, you're doing the you're doing the bridge. You're taking your guitar off and you're grabbing that wireless mic coming over here, and I'm gonna help you. Okay. Right. We can't stop now, girl. Tomorrow's coming, and the music's loud, and the boys. part about this for everybody. I was the worst bass player. I was the worst player in my band. For real. For real. I mean, I wasn't bad. I sucked, but I wasn't bad. No, uh, I was a good bass player, but my, the players in my band were great. And so we would have parts, and they'd have them in 30 minutes, 40 minutes. They're done. I'm still going, what key are we in? <laughs> the question was, how bad did I want it? I would go home and I would work up my part and work up my part and just practice it and practice it and practice it. Absolute truth, no exaggeration. And we'd come to rehearsal and I'd have it and then we'd go out and play the show and because, uh, whatever, I, I knew how to do a show, the guys got so mad at me because the reviews would be like, awesome bass player, amazing. <laughs> and they'd be like, no he's not. <laughs> <laughs> But, but audiences are, yeah, they don't know. They don't, there's not a sign above he somebody's head going, took him 10 hours, took him 30 minutes. <laughs> so how bad do you want it? Seriously. You really want to make a living doing this? I'm telling you how to do it. <laughs> All right. Um, we got a, uh, what time, what, what do we got? 6.14. So, so if I go like five or 10 minutes long, has everyone got? You wanna? 
You want to order in some pizza and wine? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> All right, just kidding. All right. Actually, I'm not, but that's a whole nother story. All right, so, um, so the idea is hit the bridge. Hit the bridge. Do the bridge normal, and don't ever, I'm going to shoot you, boom, don't ever go to the other court until we finish the, ha the happy ending, okay? It's back and forth, back, but, but dynamics, just like you guys felt it. Yeah, 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 yeah. You don't have to worry about that. You just sing the whole, ha the whole half of the line, the whole half of the line. Uh, <laughs> you know, this time I'm going to hold on, I'm going to hold, I'm going to grab your arm when it's time to stop. All right? No, seriously. Then I'm going to let go when it's time to sing. I'm going to stop, all right, for now. And you do the same thing with him. Lucky him. <laughs> Sorry, dude. Uh, I, have, I have hair. I don't know. <laughs> it's a start. All right. From the bridge. We can't stop now, girl, tomorrow's coming in the music. We're, we're, we're not right. We're not correct. Is that the bridge? No, that's the chorus after the bridge. Oh, that's the chorus. just finish the bridge. Land on the one. And you set your guitar. Yeah, okay. and then we'll figure yeah. out where the heck Stop we the go. Right. Got some girls coming in the music. sake of time. Let's just vamp out on the one and the four. Don't even go through the, the rest of the chord progression. We're headed towards an ending. La, 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 can't stop now. And I want you to ad lib. Yeah, can't stop, can't stop. And then I want you to do this. Uh. All right. So just vamp. So we're going to da, 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 da. We can't stop now. Yeah, we, yeah, we can't stop we're now. The end of the Very happy you, ending. Yeah, after the happy ending, we're just vamping out to the end. This is whole. We're not going through any of the chord progression. We're not singing. We're not, no, you're singing. You're going. You're going. Can't stop now, and you're going. Da, 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 da. Can't stop now. Yeah. Can't stop now. Yeah. Yeah, 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 boom. We can't four. stop, but you just stop. Just, 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 well, just one four, one four out. Yeah, yeah, just, yeah. Yeah, for time's sake. And I'm kind of soloing it. Yeah, you're comping off of his thing. Yep. You're being a rock guitar star. Yeah, and then put a trash on it. Bam! And then here's what I want you to do. Yeah, yeah. You, you've got it. But here's the deal. You turned around to him. You're giving your authority to a drummer. Big mistake. <laughs> They can't even count to four. No, they can't actually. They can't count to five. Yeah, that's 
but it's bah, you're, you, and you're looking at the audience, you're milking the audience, come on, come on, come on, you give them an anticipation note, bah, and then don't back up, in fact, take a step forward, and don't say, thank you, because everyone does it, boom, thank you, so here's the applause, bah, ooh. you go, bah, you pull your mic down, you go, what do you think of that? You, you, no, you can say that, but just don't say it on mic. What do you think of that? Yeah. You grab the guitar with your right hand, pull it off, and go, yeah. High five him, and then go sell some merch. Praise God. That's what I'm talking about. Yeah. You believe it? All right. You don't call me sir. Tom. Tom. Dang it. Yes, Gandalf. Well. <laughs> All right. So, what? Are, I can't remember what I was even saying. So let's take it from the. Let's take it from the. Where, uh, the trade off. No, trade-off. from the trade off. Let's try it one more time. Here with me. Back and forth. One five, and then just comp out, guys. I'm at one five, one four, whatever. Yeah. What are you saying? No. Oh God. As long, they they got a gig. All right. All right. This is their manager. You guys know Rick? Hey, how you guys doing? Saw you guys earlier. Trent, strap on your guitar real quick. Okay, here's the thing. We don't have a full-length CD yet out. It's going to be coming really, really soon. But follow him on socials, at Trent Harmon. Come here, I want you to play the first part of her. I'm doing this oh, to you. By, I know. Is it by himself? Yeah. Oh, okay. Just by himself for a second. So when I first talked with Tom, Tom and I go way back. We both worked with Taylor at the same time. And I, when Tom asked to do this, I said, dude, we got this song that's just driving people crazy. Just him and his guitar. It wasn't going to work for this, but this is my hair on your arm gift to you, Tom. He has no idea. He's never heard this song. But I just, you guys have been awesome. From a group of musicians, dude, we're all it. 
You know, email me. We'll come open for you. We don't care. We just love to play. You know, and that's what's great about this guy. But I want you to hear something because everybody always talks shit. <laughs> that, that a lot of the American Idol people are fabricated and all that stuff. This is, never mind. You'll think for yourself. Give it up. I had no idea we were doing this, but that's okay. Um, I started working on this song about the last week I was on Idol, and I had a, um, long story short, I'm not married, but I do have a, I have a lady friend that I've been with for a long time, you know, six, six, seven years, I don't know, but this young lady came one night, and she said, hey, can we hang out after the show? And I said, well, oh, you might be sweet and kind and everything that you think I need, but you... You can't be her, because I have a her, and, and uh, you can't be that. I already got one. I thought, man, that sounds like a country song. And I, here we go. This is her. Gotta know what you're getting yourself into. You're trying to fit inside a heart, and I'm telling you, well, it ain't got no room. Mm, trust me, I know that you don't get told no that much, but here's the honest truth you could be found. You could be sweet, you could be everything that I need. You could be the fix, or you could be the cure. But whatever you are, girl, one thing's for sure, you'll never be hurt. Her, her, her. Now you'll never be hurt. Uh, uh. Yeah, my baby, she can be a trip and She's a handful, but I can handle it And she's a firecracker, but I'm already lit I'm already lit, I'm already lit She's a sweet to my swag Best I'm ever gonna have Might sound crazy, but it doesn't matter Baby, you could be fine You could be sweet you could be everything that I need. You could be the fix. You could be the cure. For whatever you are, girl, one thing's for sure. You'll never be hurt. 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 You'll never be hurt. 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 I mean, uh, good job. Good job. Thank you. I can do that. Wow. All right, just guys, hang with me for five, six, seven more minutes. All right, all right, that's it. I want because I, I want to have some things to say to you. Um, First of all, uh, thanks for being such a kind audience to these guys and to me. Uh, 
Part of the foundation of being a great artist is, is who you are. And like I said earlier, who you are is more important than what you do. And the thing that an audience understands is confidence. We've talked about confidence a little bit. But confidence comes with preparation. I can't tell you how important it is to go into that book, those into those DVDs, and rip them apart, mark it, stop, work. I've never, never, get rid of the feedback, please. I don't need monitors. Um, I never seen somebody who's worked at it that has not, their merch hasn't jumped drastically. They haven't got more bookings. That's for you. That's not for me. You buy my book, you buy my three DVDs, I make 99 bucks, boy, that's going to change my life. Now, it's going to get me a good dinner, maybe in this hotel. Uh, <laughs> but confidence comes from preparation. Just imagine this is a building block. Here's the block with confidence. On top of that block is a thing called authority. Now, authority is different than confidence. Authority comes from someone who knows what they're doing, believes they're called to do this thing, and it's a wrestling match. It's a wrestling match inside your, old, your own head. See, authority actually comes from humility. Real authority. Otherwise, we have false humility. Ah, oh, shucks, it's just me. And as, as artists to stand on the stage, you have been given this place of authority. You need to take it. And that takes humility. Because here's the deal. Whatever you do, if you bring it with all your heart, mind, soul, and strength, you will get criticized. If you do these things, you will get criticized. But you might as well get criticized for doing something because you're already getting criticized for doing nothing. All right. No one on the planet had more authority. I, I, I'm a Christ follower, but no one on the planet had more authority. No one on the planet, if you read, read the deal, had more authority than Jesus. He raised, he raised people from the dead. No one has ever done that. No one had more humility than Jesus either. Why? Because he was God in the flesh. And he humbled himself. So when the Pharisees came to him and said, this is humility now. The Pharisees came to him and said, because they were frustrated, the, the, the music leaders, I mean the religious leaders, <laughs> came to him and said, tell us, tell us plainly, because they were, they were trying to figure them out. They said, tell us plainly, are you, this is real, if you really read the text, it says, are you God in the flesh? He didn't say, well, shucks, there's kind of three of us. Uh, <laughs> he said, yes. Yes. They crucify him for it. Now, they're not going to crucify you. They might write a ba bad review. Somebody might have a hate thing. But it's because you are doing what you're called to do. All I can assume is if you're at this event, because you're called to do music. Before the world was formed, God ordained you to stand on that stage. Now you either bring it or you don't. You don't wait for permission. He didn't go, hey, uh, you mind if I uh, heal you? <laughs> no, they came to him. Real humility Come, real authority comes from humility. And you need to walk in that humility. You are a musician. You are a singer. Now do your due diligence and do your preparation. But then walk in that authority that you've been called to. And people come to me all the time and say, uh, I remember the, I've, done this, uh, I've done this 25 years since I was four. So I remember the first 10, 12 years, labels and managers come up to me and say, man, I love what you're doing, but you can't teach that charisma thing. And for the first 10, 12, 15 years, I would go, yeah, you're right, because I was concerned about doing the trade-offs and all that stuff. And I just, then I, one night, um, I started thinking, what is charisma? Well, charisma is spirit. 
and, and what I found is I started working with artists on, they've, they've developed the confidence, they've walked in the authority, and they walk in it night after night after night, they start developing charisma. But if you don't walk in that, if you're hoping for someone to confirm that you're what you are or whatever, then you're going to wait the rest of your life. So we need to walk in the authority we've been called to. And it sure would be great to have a voice come from heaven and say, you are a musician, go, and I'm going to make you rich and wealthy. But again, my favorite person in the world, when, he, when the, the, the man came to him and said, my daughter has died, please, please do something. He didn't say, eh, whatever. He said, don't fear, just believe. So, the last thing I want to say to you is this. You have to have the faith to take risks. You have to have the courage to do it. It is what separates you. Those ideas that come into your head, most of them, creatively, are what makes you unique. Here's what happens when we get those ideas, whether it's in rehearsal, whether it's on stage, whether it's like I said yesterday, shaving, I get it, well, what if I did this in that song? Right behind that idea, it'll never work. What if it doesn't work? I'm afraid, what if, what if, what if? So we shut it down. And we become homogenized, hoping somebody can see inside our life and go, you're special. So, I'm going to give you a, a concept. Understand the concept again, not the specific, okay? Let's say I'm a singer. I've been singing, I don't know, three years, six years, 40 years, does not matter. Standing on stage, kind of shy, and... Um, so I always sing behind a microphone stand because I don't want to draw too much attention to myself. The irony is, I'm so uncomfortable, I draw attention to myself. But I'm standing on stage. It's a Friday night. We're going over someplace to play. Wow, it's rocking. It's one of those nights I can feel it. The audience is with me. As I'm standing on stage for the first time, I hear this voice that says, take the microphone out of the stand. Here's what the audience sees, because I'm into it behind the stand. Here's what I see in my head if I do it. I have a choice to make. Don't answer it. Zip your mouth. I mean it. Do I listen to faith? Or do I listen to fear? Faith, do I have the courage to take that step? Or do I listen to fear? Let's say I listen to faith. And, and there's techniques. Did I mention my book and my DVD? Okay. Um, that show you how to get rid of the stand, walk, talk, and chew gum. Well, let's say, and if those of you who have done this, and I know there's people in this room that have done this, at first you feel a little naked because that stand is a crutch. Just like you and your guitar, just like you and your keyboard, some of you. But, if, but after a while, you're like, oh, this is pretty cool. Pretty cool. So I'm standing on stage. I'm singing. And, I, and it's one of those nights again. And then I hear this voice that says, moo. Now I've got that chord, which he had. And here's what the audience sees as I'm singing. I see myself starting to walk. The chord comes out. I'm trying to put it back in. <laughs> and I have a choice to make. Courage or fear. Here's what I believe the Spirit is saying to you. You're sitting there going, I want this in my life. I want this career. I want this thing. And, and once I get out there and, and I get that opportunity, I'll really do it. And the truth is, no, you won't. Because here's your next step. Take the microphone out of the stand. That's what it's saying to you, that thing in your voice. If you can't get past that, do you really think you're going to do something else? And here's the amazing thing. Even if the court comes out, the stand falls down, 
And it happens every once in a while. The next day, the sun will still come up. It's not the end of the world, folks. If you're not growing, you're not making enough mistakes. So, I say to you in love, please, if you really want to do this, I know no other way. I, I've tried this. As you can tell, I, I'm, I'm a believer. I've tried, I've tried the wand, okay? You're now a great performer. Didn't work. There's the blue pill, the red pill, didn't work. Even tried it at a black gospel event one night. Everyone was whipped up. I'm like, come on up here. In the name of Jesus, you're not a great performer. They're going, no, nothing yet. <laughs> <laughs> so we got to do it the old fashioned way. We got to learn. We got to put in the work. So I'm not here to sell you something, but I am. No, this isn't for me. Sure, I'm going to have a better meal tonight. 438 pages for three DVDs. Normally $180. I'm selling them here for 99 bucks. We've sold a ton of them. I don't know how many are left, if any are left. But my wife is out there. She's got them. Yeah. <laughs> now, Um, and I also have a seven DVD set, 17 classes. I've recorded, spent 80 grand doing all this, and, and uh, this has the visual part of it. In a perfect world, you buy both. But tonight, here, no. Um, <laughs> other part of my life has to do with, I've been blessed, so I want to do something for you guys and somebody else. Um, I don't know about you, but I'm a little older, and as years go on, I think the world's getting crazier. I don't know. Anybody with me? All right, so, so when I see 13 people run over in, in um, Spain and 100 people injured, I, I watch it, and I, I don't know about you, but particularly when I watch it at night in the news, I get frustrated. Don't even know what to do about it. But then, was Ariana Grande's concert. There was 22 people, 26 people, whatever it was. I mean, boom, crazy. Again, we're watching it, we're, we're, we're brought into it, but what can we do about it? Nothing. We heard about both of those, right? Did you hear about the 22,000 kids that died today? No, you didn't. And yesterday? the day before? No. Every day. It's because it's not news. It's not exciting. It's a kid in Africa. It's a kid in uh, Kentucky. It's this. But here's the deal. I work with, I've worked for 24 years with charity. This is an amazing charity, 75 years old. If you sponsor a child tonight, and I, tell, I promise you, these are world-class, this is a world-class charity. If you sponsor a child tonight, I'll give you my $300 DVD set. $33 a month. Change your life and change your life at the same time by watching this thing. Now, you can pay me 300 bucks. That's cool, too. Twist my arm. But what I want to do is this is something you can do something about. Yeah, you don't have to look at the TV and get frustrated. I'm telling you right now, you go sponsor a child. You're changing life. No BS, I've done it for 24 years. Over a million kids have gotten sponsored through artists just like you. So, fill out those email cards. You guys, this has been an uh, awesome night, at least for me. Um, yeah, thank you for coming. My wife has got a table right out here, and I really don't know how much of the stuff we have left. Um, God bless you. See you tomorrow. I late, but I'll see you tomorrow. <laughs>
Just leave the email cards on your seat and we'll get, come get them.